All right, guys, here's another episode of South Carolina Spearfishing. Today, we're heading offshore about 40 miles. We're going to do two dives out there, and then we're going to come back into an artificial reef that's about 10 miles offshore and do our final dive there. So today, we have Rich, Nick, and myself are diving. We found this weird little thing on the bottom. Couldn't quite figure out what it was, but we didn't really want to put it in our bag and carry it along with us either, so we just left it there. As soon as we got to the reef here, you can see Rich took off, trying to find some lobster. I hung back here and uh, did my best to wipe out the lion fishing area. The pole spear I'm using is Mako's Big Game Travel Pole Spear, and I love this thing. I had the one foot extension on the end of it, and then I had the, it's like a real big three pronged spear tip on the end, and you can see it just nails these fish, goes straight through them easily. And I, mean, I can easily hit a fish much larger than these guys. This is just the best setup I had for it. I don't care to buy a Hawaiian sling just for going after lionfish. Honestly, this is the first time I've put real effort into it. So, clean them up. That's nice, this nice little fun on the bottom. I nail him. Then with my, my lionfish cage here, getting it down was really the only problem. Once it was filled up with water, it wasn't too bad. Um, it was like a real cork at first, but it was just a big heavy thing to, to, to bring along, so it was a bit of a pain. Anyway, so you see here on the side of it, I built in a little sheath for my pole spear. So whenever I do, do my ascent, I have one less thing to worry about. Then I have this little twist tie here. I wanted it to go around the whole spear, but I, I was just rushing it, and so I got on the one prong there, tightened it off. So, doing our ascent, I'm handling the ascent fine with it. I do have an extra five pound lead on the lionfish cage, and so that was making me dive a little heavy. So, I was just a little extra careful on my ascent. Now, this is a heartbreaking point right here. You see the pole spears there, and then it's gone. So, the little twist tie I had holding it in place just wasn't enough, and right there we're getting yanked up and down by the anchor rope. And so it just got shooken out. Um, at this point, I was down to like 500 pounds of air, and we're 20. We we're probably at 20 feet right there. So there's no going back down for it. Well, we hung out, did our surface interval here. Uh, we actually hooked a few sharks, which is a great thing to hook while you're trying to do some diving. Uh, the second dive is just Rich and I headed down. We spent the first half kind of looking for the pole spear, trying to find it. We really didn't have much luck. The visibility today is really pretty low. So we did find a little slipper lobster right here. And Rich has become very good at finding these things. It's pretty impressive. And this little alien looking creature is something you'd never know existed unless you were into this sport. I was amazed to take a close look at this thing. It looks just bizarre. The other exciting part of our second dive was during our ascent here, this whole big school of amberjacks came by. And then all of a sudden, Rich flips out, gets my attention. We can see a whole school of cobia swimming over there. And with the cobia is probably a 10 plus foot long shark. So they got Rich's attention. Did you see the shark too? Huh? Did you see the cobia? I saw the cobia. And then did you see the fucking shark? Yeah. What cobia? Holy shit. Cobia. They're all good. But overall, the second dive was good. It really is a huge bummer that I couldn't find the pole spear. I really liked that thing. It just nailed fish so freaking hard. So we trotted back inshore. Now we're at an artificial reef. This is in 55 feet of water. Drop it in here. We're using a marker buoy. We just troll over it, over the wreck till we find it. We drop the anchor from the buoy. Uh, then we'll just go down the line. And that just helps us all stick together and make sure that we find the wreck because the visibility here can be very poor, as you'll see. So once we're on the line here, here I'll speed up the video for you. So you can see the difference of this light green to the darker green to a mustard yellow crummy green. <laughs> and then we finally get down the bottom. You can see why free diving around here is really a pretty rare sport because it's this is 10 miles offshore, which is still not a simple jog, and this is the kind of visibility you have. So it's really a, a chore to try to do it around here. 
When we get down here, we really look for any faint shadow in the distance, and that's usually the wreck. So we headed over to it. And right here, I almost I almost swam right on top of this guy. Huge stingray, just hiding right there. So I just bump him a little bit, and so he'll take off. And circling around the rack, we run into each other. And it's funny, there's a flounder right here in front of him that he didn't see. Not a big deal that he missed it. I'll, I'll happily take that for him. And then Nick saw this one, so he came over and borrowed my gun so he could go over and get it. He nails it perfectly. The, the problem around here, the problem on these wrecks is that a lot of the times there's just a thin layer of sand and then this metal underneath. So you really don't want to shoot into the deck. Um, anytime you do, you really want to hope that there's a lot of sand there or else you might not get your spear back. And so this really this area is where my pole spear would have been perfect. So continuing on here, this was really funny. I had to do a double take when I saw this thing at the distance. And I swim up to this big shell, and it's like, is it broken? Is it broken? It isn't! It's in one piece. Yay! It's really exciting to find big shells like that because they just never wash up on shore that big and intact. We're getting ready to leave. We all get round up and we get on the marker buoy. And then Rich brings over this anchor that he's determined to bring with us. He wants me to tie it onto the line, and I really don't think that line's strong enough. So I figure I'll take it up because I still haven't invested in a float bag. So I give Rich my gun and then you really want to eliminate anything you can, can get tangled up on while doing an ascent with something like this. So I take my light off, just try to get all your gear tucked away so you will, you'll have as few problems as possible. Um, and then I just did a slow, careful ascent, hauling that weight up. And we really just kind of slide up the line just so we all stay together. I was saying the stringer first. stringer first. I totally forgot. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. We, did, we made out pretty good. Yeah. Uh, the size of that fucking cock shell. Yeah. Oh my god. It was. Uh, I've never seen one that that tight before. That that big. Yeah. They get big. The shell you got? I got one twice as big. <laughs> it's my oh, blue bag. That? I got I got a one twice as big. Yeah. I see. There's a lot of them. In well, pretty good day. We got a whole bunch of flounder. We got a slipper, a little slipper lobster. Um, overall, three good dives. Everyone's nice and healthy still. But you can really see the, uh, the visibility difference between 10 miles offshore and 40 miles offshore. It's a huge difference. Hey guys, thanks for watching my dive video. Just want to show you one more thing. I'm sitting here on my patio playing these lionfish. Check out how many eggs one lionfish carries. This is just ridiculous. I found this in a few of them. All those little cells are going to be lionfish. They're going to eat up all the, all the good fish that we're trying to eat. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments, and I'll get back to you later.